Hare Krishna. So after the gap of uh, two Mondays, we are meeting again. One Monday I was in Rishikesh in transit and one Monday I was in Gangotri in transit. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Asmai Sri Guru Ve Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sapitam ye na bhutale, Swayam rupa kadamayam, Dadati swapadantikam, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. राम राम हरे हरे जय श्री राधे श्याम सो वी लास्ट टाइम एंडेड एट द पॉइंट दैट देयर वाज अ कंसर्न एंड वरी एक्सप्रेस्ड बाय द ब्रजवासीज अबाउट कृष्ण बलराम्स प्रोटेक्शन सो उपनंद महाराज द ओल्डेस्ट ब्रदर ऑफ नंद महाराज he asked his wife prabhavati so did you go to nand bhavan so she said uh, how how one can live without visiting nand bhavan every day how one can miss they cannot survive only so she narrates the event that i explained last time that how krishna escaped from the vigilance of the uh, maid servants and went to the banks of jamuna which was very deep and was playing there in the sand and finally mother yashoda had to go and scold him and bring him back and after that uh, narration of the event by prabhavati gopi to her husband upananda he said i think uh, it's become very dangerous over here so prabhavati says then you should talk in today's assembly now what is assembly every single day there is a assembly called chorasi khamba that's the location venue of the assembly and all the um, elderly gopas they assemble over there and they discuss about that day's uh, past time of krishna and then they discuss about the pros and cons their interpretations and uh, purports they give and then they discuss about krishna's protection and welfare and everything else so prabhavati says that see today in the assembly you must raise this topic it all yours you are the leader you are the senior most most learned most experienced they respect you you are also a minister of nand maharaj so please raise this point so that evening after the yamala arjuna trees were uprooted after that Upananda Maharaj is now in the assembly of Chaurasi Khamba of Gokul. Everybody, please be attentive. Every single small small part of this uh, anecdotes of this lecture will be very important and very interesting to know. First of all, I want to tell you that the description in Bhagavatam is very short for obvious reasons because um, Shukdev Maharaj cannot uh, go on describing everything in detail and. the time of the departure of parishit maharaj will come then how would he complete everything so that's why there are many 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 points which shukdev ji maharaj has described in short and he could not describe in detail but our dear merciful jiva goswami has described all those points in great detail and you will be very surprised to know he describes those items in very great details amazingly details but he still says i just cannot describe this event it is impossible for me to describe this event is so many things are there i cannot describe you this is what is statement so now um, upanand maharaj start discussing and he says that uh, how krishna was born and then putana came she created a havoc nobody knew she, he got cheated by her 
Then Chakatasur came. There was a nice ceremony going on on the third month. And then the big cart demon came, Utkacha, and he created havoc. Then on the first birthday of Krishna, the whole whirlwind came. And it was such a confusion, such a darkness of dust everywhere. And Krishna had to, finally, by the mercy of Lord Narayan, Krishna was protected. The demon was smashed on the rock. And then, lo and behold, the two big trees fell down. It, it could have fallen down on the children. It could have fallen down on Krishna. They were just inch away from the two trees. Krishna was in between. Some children were in between. Some children were out of the uh, range of the trees. But they were just, just saved by the mercy of Narnavai. But we cannot just risk our children, Krishna Balaram. The demons are constantly haunting them to kill them. And we don't know who is behind it, but somehow this place has become very dangerous. So then, all the incidents are being caused by some unknown demon. Because he comes here to create another disturbance. Before he comes here to create another disturbance, it is our duty to go somewhere else with the boys until there are no more disturbances. So Prabhupada very beautifully explains that disturbances will keep coming in the material world wherever you are living. You may live in India, you may live in village, you may live in city, you may live in America, England. But the disturbances will not leave you. They will reach there before you. So your karmas, the agents of your karma will reach before you reach there. But Srila Prabhupada says there have been so many disturbances to our Krishna conscious movement also. But we never stopped. We cannot give up our forward, forward march. We have to keep serving. So at the same time, in the material world, when we are living, there is disturbances also. There are disturbances also. And there is encouragement also. So we should take, Prabhupada says, we should take the clue of encouragement and keep our forward march on. Banam Brinda Banam Nama Pashavyam Navakananam Gopa Gopi Gava Sevyam Punyadri Trunavirudham. Very beautiful, famous shloka of Bhagavatam. This one and the next one. Between Nandagao and Madhuvan, now Upananda Maharaj is saying, between Nandishwara and Mahavan, Gokul, is a place called Brindavan. This place is very suitable because it is lush with green grass, with green plants, with creepers for the cows and other animals. It has nice gardens, tall mountains, and it is full of facilities for happiness of all the gopis, all the gopas, and their animals. Therefore, let us go immediately there. There is no need to wait. And further, if you agree to my proposal, let us prepare all the bullock carts and put the cows in front of us and let us go there. Now, <clears throat> We should, not, we should not bother. Upananda Maharaj is a very great devotee of the Lord. Believe me. He says we should not bother Narayan, Bhagwan, to protect our bodies and our homes, which are very insignificant. Tuchha. Narayan is the giver of Pancham Purushartha. What is Pancham Purushartha? That is love. Prema Pumarto Mahan. So when Narayan can give you Pancham Purushartha, why should we bother Narayan to protect your bodies and our wealth and our houses? We should tolerate all the miseries as a result of our past karma. And we should give up the sources of miseries, tyajya. And we should accept the source of happiness, that is grahya. All the events of Putana, Shakata, Punavarta, Yamalarjun, Bruksha, are they not enough to give up this place? There is no need to take permission of Kamsa. Because we are cowherd community. We don't have to, don't have a fixed forest where we stay. We keep moving from one place to another. And we, we pay taxes to, uh, for staying in the forest to Kamsa. So as long as Kamsa is getting taxes, he will not bother. So I don't think we should take a permission or need permission of Kamsa for moving from one place to another. This, now he's talking about Vrindavan. This Vrindavan, which I am addressing to you, is a topmost place of happiness. The ultimate, 
ultimate summit or limit of pleasure in both the world spiritual and material world auspicious act should be performed as early as possible this is what he is saying i am telling you a siddhanta upananda baba is saying auspicious activities should be performed as early as possible if you delay any auspicious activity then the delay itself creates confusion and doubt about the auspicious activity itself it's like you know when we arrange weddings so what we say jhat mangni pat chadi we should immediately arrange the engagement and get the people get the couple married but suppose you delay delay and delay then all problems start coming that we all grasp as no very well so like that he says this is the siddhanta we should not delay in doing good activities and acceptance or we call as sammati sammati means concurrence of many more people for the decision is extremely important but it increases the auspiciousness of the activity so everyone gave saharsh sammati that means very happily everybody unanimously agreed to whatever upananda maharaj was saying i remember one uh, story which i told you earlier when there was a uh, crowning of nanda maharaj and upananda maharaj upananda maharaj uh, was crowned and he put his crown on nanda maharaj so nanda maharaj said no but upananda maharaj no i am as a king ordering you you become king so nanda maharaj that time told that i will become king on your order only on one condition that you will always advise me how to run the kingdom and i will follow only your instructions on how to run the kingdom if you agree with me then only i'll accept the kingdom so he said yes i will always advise you so you can see here this is a proof that nanda kept his word upananda maharaj also kept his word upananda maharaj suggested that this is a dangerous place we should move from here nanda maharaj immediately accepted ordered his kinsmen please pack up everything and leave so now upananda maharaj is very beautifully defining what is brajavasi jiva goswami is actually explaining so he says that vrajan vrajan means moving from one place to another so the cowards although they were staying in one place but they were always moving with cows from place to place from forest to forest so gopas are famous for their brajata brajata means vrajan to move around those who travel from one forest to another within vrindavan dham are called brajvasis they keep walking with the cows all over the braj this is a very beautiful description jiva goswami gave then with that uh, unanimous a decision accepted by everybody then they all went to purnamasi see this is also very simple very important culture purnamasi is the guru of all the senior gopis including yashoda rohini and prabhavati etc etc so they went and put the full proposal with explanation to purnamasi purnamasi gave her blessings and then they started moving how did they move from that place they uh first of all played their buffalo horns and it scared they created a big kilod of auspicious sounds all over the area then they put all their houses on their bullock carts i mean houses means all the material of the house and it is explained by jeevago swami that each bullock cart was a big house in itself like we say drawing room or we say a full flat an apartment like that each bull bullock cart was and each bullock cart was especially nanda yashoda rohini's bullock carts were decorated with jewels they were having golden uh, skeleton bedecked with jewels they had satin and um, you know makmal soft cushions with um, um, silk borders and they gathered their cows they um, picked up their baby bulls and baby cows on their shoulders and the bulls were pulling the cart and the cows were put in center surrounded by all the men and the bullock carts it's a very beautiful arrangement of protection of cows women old people and children and in the center of everything was yashoda mai's uh, bullock cart and uh, bhagavatam also explains and uh, jeeva goswami also explains that the two mothers rohini and uh, yashoda they were unable to be separated from each other and to be separated from krishna and balram 
so they ascended on the same bullet cart and as it was a big like a house it could accommodate all of them and nandalala was in the lap of yashoda and balram ji was in the lap of rohini and all over the sides um, elder cows and the bulls were carrying all the loads and of course cows were just walking and their bells were ringing very beautiful auspicious sound was coming all over and um, the men were saying ji hi ji hi 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 why but it was the sound to make the cows and bulls move move further so they were playing instruments and they were um, uh, when the bulk bullock cart moves even jiva goswami and shukde goswami both of them described that there was a very rumbling rush you know what do you call that um, gross sound of the bullock carts wheels um, cracking cracking sounds of all thousands and thousands and thousands of bullock carts so it was a very very beautiful scenario and on the top of the that on top of that the covered boys were singing songs they were dancing they were describing the past times of krishna old people children ladies were on the cart young men and young men were carrying bows and arrows and clubs because they were in the kshatriya mood also to protect the other ones so young ones young men also were being protecting protecting mood and they were carrying bows arrows swords and clubs and they were walking on the periphery of the whole procession interesting to know while nand maharaj and his four brothers left from gokul brishbhanu maharaj also left from raval because they were so thick friends that if nand maharaj goes there is no question of brishbhanu maharaj staying in raval so brishbhanu maharaj was a very big king so he also arranged all these things which i described to you in a similar way and they were walking parallelly to one another they had their uh, big entourage of many thousands of bullock carts and moving bulls and moving cows and luggages and there were elephants and there were uh, sheep and there were all kinds of animals were there now uh, they were what they were doing while they were settled in their journey they started glorifying the cows singing songs to glorify the auspicious nidda of the cows then they started singing bala charitra of krishna whatever has happened till now i will also tell you the song in in prose what they were singing and in between is explained that uh, it's looked like the whole village was moving physically like houses were moving it was looking like that and then it was someone was calling somebody so the person who is calling uh, to him the person called was coming behind and talking then he was going ahead and talking he was coming behind and talking and uh, they were all somebody was asking questions somebody was answering the questions and they were discussing and then they started describing the songs the singing the songs describing the leelas of krishna while they were chanting the glories of baby past times of krishna what was happening imagine how they were lives were we should take deep inspiration from this in their day to day course what they were doing in their day to day activities what they were doing like you ladies are cooking cleaning washing getting the house ready putting the beds ready some common chores you know putting the clothes for drying even such common activities they were just walking now we were shifting their luggage but what they were doing while doing that they were immersed in chanting the glories of krishna and it was not not just by the way chanting the glories of krishna they were immersed what is the proof of their Im- Im- getting immersed there were tears flowing from their eyes they were getting stunned in between stambha vikar they were sweating out of ecstasy their body was kamp trembling the hair was standing on end there was change of color so all ashtavikaras were being exhibited so it is not just by the way while you are cooking you are saying radhe radhe krishna krishna this ecstatic symptoms were produced while they were walking on the road it is said that the gopis when they were shifting from mahavan to vrindavan they were decorated in beautiful gorgeous silken clothes and bedecked with flowers and ornaments all over their body body as if it was a big festival because everything that you do in vrindavan dham is a festival even if krishna sneezes it's a festival even if krishna turns to one side at 3 months of age is a festival whatever krishna does is a festival 
सो मूविंग फ्रॉम इट इज इट गर्ग संहिता से महावन से वृंदावन चलने का उद्योग दिस इज अ फेस्टिवल जीवा गोस्वामी एज नरेटेड इज सो ब्यूटिफुली लेट्स गो हेड so what they were singing let us hear very carefully huh? you also can practice this singing o oh, son of nanda and yashoda you give pleasure to all those who love you you kill putana you kill chakatasur you give pain to trunavarta you deliver the two yamala arjun trees you are the punya of of gokula you are the most auspicious event or happening of gokul you play with balaram constantly Unceasingly, you crawl in the on the in the country in the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj. You make the Nanda Nanda's courtyard glorious and auspicious and colorful. You take great pleasure in releasing the cows. You know the pastime of Krishna is so happy to to tease the gopis by releasing the bound cows calves. You know. and they will go and drink all the milk and the gopis will go and try to milk the cows as we know milk because they refuse to give milk and curd to yogurt to krishna krishna will do this mischief so they are glorifying you take great pleasure in releasing the calves you keep stealing butter that is your chivalry you show your chivalry by stealing butter by many many different different ideas oh you krishna the performer of damodar leela I am so happy to see you bound by Mother Yashoda. We pray that you always remain filled with abundant happiness and also immerse us in happiness. Iti druks valila vir ananda kunde swagosham nimat jantam akya payantam. You drown us in the ecstasy of pools of love and ecstasy. Now Yashoda and Rohini sat in sat in one cart. It was golden in color, bedecked with jewels. seats with satin soft cushions as big as a house bright due to the effulgence of krishna and balram sitting inside the cart at this point jiva goswami says entrance of krishna leela in the ears please listen to this very carefully entrance of words of krishna leela describing krishna leela in the ears and the hearts makes one free from all the anarthas first of all the anarthas walk out and then what happens fills the heart with love and then he says no more uh, love enter in the heart the heart itself becomes personified love for the person who is immersed in krishna leela so please understand it is not only for yashoda and nanda and all the gopis it is for you and me also if you allow krishna leela to constantly enter your ears while you are doing your day to day work then your heart will become love personified one day now the talks begin let me let me uh, uh, tell you two three shlokas from bhagavatam which uh, describe about vrindavan vrindavanam <clears throat> sampravishya sarva kal sukhavaham tatra chakrur तत्र चक्रुर प्रजावासम शकटैर अर्ध चंद्रवत सो वृंदावन इज सेज इट इन ऑल सीजंस इट इज वेरी प्लेजरेबल सर्व काल सुखाव सुखाव एंड नेक्स्ट लोका सेज दैट वृंदावनम गोवर्धनम यमुना पुलिनानी च विक्षासी विक्षासिद उत्तमा प्रीति राम माधव योर नृप Oh, Nrupa, oh, Parikshit, listen carefully. This Vrindavan, which consists inside, which it consists inside of of Govardhan and Yamuna Pulinacha. Yamuna Pulin means the banks of Yamuna, Yamuna Kinara. So wherever these things are there, Yamuna Kinara, Govardhan and Vrindavan, it gives pleasure to those who are the source of all pleasure. What we call Krishna is one of the name is Ram, reservoir of all pleasure. so they are the source of all pleasure but vrindavan is such a glorious place and such a glorious entity that it gives pleasure to the source of pleasures also that is a beautiful part of the vrindavan dham <coughs> <coughs> then there is a description sometimes uh, vrindavan is i mean not sometimes 
always filled with peacocks kujat kokila hamsa sarasa gana kirne mayure kule this is sadugo swami ashtaka in this vindavan description is there what kind of birds are there there is there is kokila the cuckoo birds there is hamsa there is swan there is sarasa pakshi there is a, there is a there is peacock there is chakravaka pakshi there are so many beautiful birds there are always there are ducks there are cranes there are monkeys there are bulls there are cows there are parrots all the birds are make chirping all the time radhe 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 and making the whole thing atmos uh, atmosphere very auspicious so krishna balaram used to imitate the sounds of these animals and birds and he kept on enjoying all the time so this is a brief uh, description about vrindavan and um, all of you know that for the pleasure of uh, radha rani shri krishna had allowed 84 kroshas of vrindavan dham to descend on mother earth so that radha rani will come otherwise radha rani will not come if there is no vrindavan yatra vrindavan nasti yatra no yamuna nadi yatra no govardhana nasti tatra na mai mana shanti that means i don't have any pleasure any sukh in a place where is no no vrindavan no govardhan no yamuna so i will not come only so that's why because of her blessings today we have on earth vrindavan yamuna and govardhan and it is said what you have in vrindavan in bhoma that is on earth that is best place amongst the material worlds and amongst the spiritual worlds also it is supposed to be superior to golok vrindavan also because there are many more attributes to this vrindavan which govind golok vrindavan does not have for example krishna is not a small baby in golok vrindavan that most 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 beautiful form of shri krishna as a small baby exists only in bhoma vrindavan not in golok vrindavan and there are no demons in golok vrindavan all are only friends and they only fight with mock fights but they come down as demons here and fulfill the desire of krishna to fight viraras is fulfilled by them and there are many more differences but there are some differences like this here now amazing thing started the real past time of walking towards uh, vrindavan they have not yet reached vrindavan they are just describing that why 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 are we going to vrindavan okay now krishna is sitting in the lap of mother yashoda balram in the lap of mother rohini and krishna is asking where are we going you know how children are right they ask you 51 questions so she says we are going to vrindavan he said where it is she says beyond yamuna immediately next question is ready we left one yamuna in gokul is there any other yamuna also <laughs> apart from that so she says no no the same yamuna flows from this place to that place when are we returning home so she says we are not returning home our home is traveling with us <laughs> so then says i want to see the moving houses then she shows them the big big bullock carts of house size you know then balram says i can see the trees also traveling with us the distant trees are traveling with us so roni says no beta they are not traveling with us it just feels like that they are traveling with us then krishna says oh dear worshipable brother balram you did not tell me that they will there we will see yamuna you never explain to me that we will be seeing yamuna there also then again sri krishna says oh younger mother rohini choti ma we will see yamuna what is the what is so special about vrindavan that we are going there taking so much of trouble itna parishram karke hum vrindavan kyu ja rahe so rohini says you know this vrindavan the new place we are going to it has many many places where you can play variety of places variety of locations and venues to play and this vrindavan will provide you unlimited toys to play with live toys to play with a variety of toys to play thus both balram and krishna laughed and laughed and laughed how did they laugh touching each other's cheek very beautiful explained by jay goswami that's a very sweet loving past time they were holding each other touching their cheeks to one another and laughing and laughing and laughing now next set of question answer started krishna said 
Now Krishna is watching here and there. Huh? He is now enjoying the traveling. What is that tree who's who's um, who's always shaking? Whose leaves are always shaking? So mother says, this is Ashwatha tree. This is people tree. Which is that tree producing millions of eggs? That is Audumba tree, Gulai tree. You know Audumba tree? It is. It is like it has got uh, hundreds of fruits like Anjir. You know Anjir, our um, what do you call it in English? I don't know. Um, anjir. Okay. So uh, this is Guler. Guler is a UP word. Audumbar is Sanskrit word. It is supposed to be the tree of Datta Datta Swami, Datta Treya. Oh mother, which is that tree who which has matted hair? Anybody can tell? It is Banyan tree, my dear child. The matted hair is falling down, na? It is hanging down. Who are they? Who are constantly jumping from one place to another? Was dark skin with yellow dots on that? The mother says, "My dear child, they are deers. They are in the forest. They are go from one place to another. They are hopping from one place to another." Then Krishna says, "Who are those who have many branched horns?" So she says. They are sambar. I don't know what is there in the word in English. Sambar means they they are like uh, deers only, but they have got very huge uh, network of branch branched horns and very strong also. They are mainly on male male uh, male day deer, and they attract female deers because of the beauty of their horns. Then he's saying, who is this bird, which has amazing multiple colors? Say, my dear Kana, he is peacock. Oh, see his feathers so beautifully spreading all over the. It's like a big fan behind him, very attractive. Who is that bird who speaks like humans? Anybody can tell. Who is the bird who speaks like humans? Oh, he's parrot. <laughs> Mother is saying he's parrot. Whatever you say, he repeats. Who is that bird who is drinking drinking pushpa rasa? Who is drinking the nectar and juice of all the flowers? Mother says, "Beta is bumblebee. He goes from one flower to another flower without discriminating between different colored flowers. He just goes inside, focused on the pushpa rasa, on the nectar, the honey that is within the flowers. So this is honey is a symbolic of a sadhu. He does not differentiate between good and bad people. He just takes good out of them." Associates with the good only from the people. Even if bad people are, they only associate with the good of those people, or he doesn't associate with them. Now, I will tell you one story, which happened on the way from Mahavan to Vrindavan. Now, see, there are many, many uh, gopis, millions and millions upon millions upon millions upon gopis, and there are gopis which are just born. Which are toddler, toddlers, which are young girls, which are you know becoming Kumar Avastha girls, which are becoming young Yuva Avastha girls, and there are middle-aged girls, there are married women, then there are uh, married women with children, then there are uh, elderly elderly women, and there are old women, and then there are very 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 old women also beyond hundred years. So all kinds of gopis are walking, but simply. Their neck is turned towards where Krishna Balram's cart is. Everybody's eyes are glued to that particular bullock cart where Mother Yashoda and Rohini are sitting in a beautifully decorated golden bedek with jewels. Such kind of attractive, effulgent bullock cart. So now, one of the gopi, please listen to the story very carefully and attentively. You have lot to learn from the story. It was very amusing story. So there is a gopi of one hundred and five year old age, and she is, uh, you know, she is uh, thinking in her mind, how lucky is Yashoda, and how lucky is Sorini, that Sri Krishna and Balaram are traveling in her their lap. How lucky is Yashoda? She is not feeling envious. She thinks, oh, how wonderful to have Krishna in our lap. I wish I had Krishna in my lap when we are traveling from this place to that place. But she said, "What is my qualification? I am so insignificant. 
I don't deserve. So let me keep watching Mother Yashoda having this beautiful fortune of having Krishna in her lap. She just thought like this. And Krishna is Antaryami. He knows what is going on in the minds of everybody. And also, this gives us hope that whatever we wish in service to Krishna, Krishna is also knowing that. What are we wishing? And doesn't only know, but also responds to that if the desire is very pure. So now, to fulfill the desire of this gopi, he arranged a big pastime. He started vigorously asking questions to Mother Ashoda. Again, in a renewed fashion. He would say, Mother, who is that bird? So she would say, he is parrot. So he would say, who is next to him? So she says, Maina, she parrot. So what does she uh, relate to him? So she said, Maina is a parrot's wife. Oh, wow. Then he said, who is that colorful bird? She is peacock. So who is next to, next to him? So she says, she's, she's peahen. So who is peahen to peacock? Peacock. Then peahen is the wife of peacock. Oh, really? Then same with deer. Then same with uh, elephants. And same with other birds and other animals. And so he took a big round of all the birds and all the animals. And specifically he asked when they were coupled with the females. So after asking all the birds who were in couples and all the animals who were in couples, suddenly after satisfactorily answering all the questions also, he started crying very loudly. And nobody knew why he is crying. I am answering all questions truthfully, whatever he is asking, I am satisfying him. But he started crying and crying and crying and crying. They gave breast milk, refused. They gave toys, refused. They gave so many other methods of singing, refused, refused and refused. And when Krishna started crying, all that caravan stopped. They just cannot move. Bulls cannot move when Krishna is crying. The moving bulls are turning behind and you know, with their necks and watching what is happening. All the gopis came running around there. All the men coming running around there. And they were wondering why Krishna is crying. Now, you know, sometimes when the children cry, they cry like this. <laughs> they can't even speak. So much they cry that they can't speak. They have to settle down to be even before speaking. So they, they are asking Krishna, what happened? He's only, only wo bhar rahe the. He couldn't even tell them what they are crying. After some time, he a little bit settled down because everybody was inquiring. So he said, everybody is having wife except me. All of them have wives and I am not having wife. I want to get married right now. Where is my wife? So Mother Yashoda and Rohini are explaining to him, Beta, you are a small boy. When you will become big, we will get a beautiful girl for you and we will get married. That is called marriageable age. You are not marriageable age now. You are a baby boy. He said, I do not know all this philosophy. I want wife right now. And he kept on crying and crying. Now if he just keeps on crying, he may not stop also. So then you have to stay there on the road only. You have to move ahead. So then all the gopis and Nishuddha will discuss. And we said, okay. All the gopis stand in groups now. All the young, small girls, uh, you know, eligible for Krishna. Then little bigger girls. Then little bigger girls. Then young girls. Then married girls. Then married with children. Then older girls and older ladies. And then the old ladies and the oldest ladies. Make your groups and stand in queue and begin with the marriageable age, you know, suitable for Krishna. Bring them first. So you can imagine there's a big festival now. Vadu Var Mela. Huh? All of all the girls are standing with hope that Krishna will say yes for me. So each and every girl was presented. Krishna said, mm -hmm. out, mm -hmm. out. Like that, all the groups, toddlers, little bigger, Little bigger and little bigger and the young ones and the Kumar and the Kishore. All beautiful, beautiful girls were one after another rejected by Krishna. Then came the turns of married women who are much, much bigger than him. He rejected them also. Then came the turns of middle-aged gopis with children, grown-up children. He rejected them also. 
then he rejected all the old ladies also then all the old ladies also then very old ladies beyond 100 only they were remaining so their group came in front they were rejected one by one by one and finally the turn came of this 105 year old gopi as soon as she was presented krishna jumped in her lap hey, this is my wife this is my wife i want to marry her this is my wife everybody laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed and they said what a perfect match what a perfect match she does not have teeth in her mouth neither you have teeth in your mouth <laughs> very perfect match and then krishna sat in her lap and traveled all the distance till nandgaon so this is the fortune of that 105 year old gopi so however insignificant we may be of course we are but if our desire is sincere free from all the anarthas of envy competitive nature you know and arrogance and all those things pride and we have something impossible desire about krishna in our heart be sure if you are clean at heart krishna will find ways and means to fulfill your desire krishna arranged a big past time to go to sit in the lap of that old lady and she had the fortune of carrying krishna all throughout the distance now after this past time um of course you all know one thing that we should know that there are enough contradictions and enough similarities in varieties of krishna's past times why it is so because of kalpa bheda because krishna does not perform this past time only once krishna's past times are called as nitya leela they are eternally being enacted constantly being enacted in the same place for example at kaliya ghat krishna is constantly dancing on the hoods of kaliya at bansi vat krishna is constantly playing flute but do you think he plays flute monotonously all the time no he plays flute in variety of ways in the same place you never find that he is the same thing again you will find that he is doing those things nava nava yaman nava kishor all time he is in a very new he is always new he is adrashta adrashta means nobody has seen him before why because what you see today is not there any time before so today's krishna nobody has seen up till now so krishna is constantly adrashta because whatever form he is showing today is never seen by anybody in the past so similarly whatever past time krishna is performing is never uh, never uh, same or monotonous so in one past time he sat in the lap of the old lady and all the way he went to nandana in another past time there was lots of question answers with nanda uh, with yashoda and uh, rohini devi and then suddenly krishna balram jumped off the bullock cart of yashoda and rohini and they went they ran and they went to meet nanda maharaj then nanda starts glorifying vrindavan so many birds so many animals so many trees so many creepers colorful atmosphere cool breeze and so much of joy in the atmosphere so pleasing and krishna balram actually that time first time touched their lotus feet on vrindavan bhumi they just jumped with all the coward boys and jumping jumping they went to nanda maharaj then then what happened then the yamuna came because you know yamuna is actually surrounding the whole vrindavan dham one thing all of you should know that what vrindavan we are talking is not the vrindavan which is there today the vrindavan today is a geographical vrindavan Which has pin code two eight one one two one. That is what we call as Bindavan today. Where our Iskand Raman Rathi is there, our auspice is there, and you know seven temples are there. That is today's Bhagolik Bindavan, geographical Bindavan. But the real Bindavan, which is addressed over here by Nand Maharaj, by Jeeva Goswami, by Shukdev Goswami, is twenty kroshas long, and it includes Jamuna River completely. It includes full Govardhan Mountain. it includes nandgaon it includes barsana it includes javwat kokilavan and in between chhata and chatikra and you name it every single thing is you know Ran ranwari and all the villages anjanok and khaira 
and uh, pipasa one everything is included in vrindavan that is what vrindavan is talking is talked about over here so when krishna moved to vrindavan that means nandagao is inside vrindavan and from there he would go to herd the cows in vrindavan the whole big forest okay so now uh, it is also explained that yamuna ji was flowing in govardhan also yamuna ji was flowing in nandagao and barsana also now in the course of time in 5000 years time the whole thing whole thing is changed the tracks have been changed and even even 35 years back when we went first time with our gurudev radhanath swami yamuna ji was right there on the outside of hospice you come out of hospice and yamuna ji was flowing there that was full of reeti you know and kaliya there yamuna ji was flowing there yamuna mother mohan ji's temple yamuna ji was flowing there you go to jugal ghat yamuna ji was flowing there but in 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 our lives of last 35 years even jamuna ji has moved much 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 away almost a kilometer and a half she has gone ahead one reason is she is moving second reason is she is also contracting becoming smaller and smaller and smaller in her width so for both these reasons she appears to be moving now from the point of view of madhuvan which is part of the whole braja gokul what happened was from madhuvan to kaliya ghat they built bridges they built bridge with wood very expertly joining the two locations they built the coward boys built the bridge and then singing dancing and shedding tears of love discussing about krishna they went over the bridge and they crossed yamuna in a very beautiful fashion laughing singing dancing all the gopas entered vrindavan and as soon as they entered vrindavan the first place came called as chatikara and the past time which i told you of the old lady actually took place at chatikara i told you little before but when they entered chatikara that is where the past time took place now chatikara is a place where they actually had a halt they took a halt chatikara is about 6 uh, kilometers from our iskon krishna balram mandir in today's time it is on the highway huh? and there we have garuda govinda mandir where krishna made sridama turn into garuda and climbed on him and krishna assumed 12 armed form of dwarka there is only one form in the whole universe where krishna has 12 forms 12 arms and he jumped on uh, sridama who became garuda and as soon as that aishwarya bhav was exhibited there rukmini and satyabhama also appeared there and radharani who was with him he turned into mahalakshmi so that beautiful darshan of garud govinda is there in chatikra and also chatikra is a place where yashoda rani performed krishna's shashti poojan with shashti devi so that's why it's called as chatikra krishna ki chhati pooja wahan par ki gayi thi another reason why it is called chatikra another reason name is shakati pura or shakati kara shakati kara why is that because when nand maharaj and vishvanu maharaj vaulted there they created a big tent and in that tent centrally was nand maharaj's palace surrounded by his brother's palace now all the coward boys and men they built their small uh, temporary houses and they bordered their tent i mean they fenced their whole tent with three things with trees with thorns and with bullock carts so what is the shloka here mentioned is ardha chandra kruti no the beautiful shloka here in bhagavatam which says that the the whole ashi tatra chakrur rajavasam shakatair ardha chandravat as the half moon half moon crescent the bullock carts were arranged and in such a way that it created a fence to all the tent now one very interesting point is here that nand maharaj's tent was in chatikara there is shashti devi mandir also there lord govind mandir also there and vrishbanu maharaj's tent was basoti or basati or basoti whatever you can say this is 1 km away from radha kund and radha kund is 28 km from today's vrindavan and interestingly prabhupad mentions that when he bought the place in ramandriti vrindavan where krishna balram temple is there now 
that time it was not there only land land was taken tigers and cheetahs and elephants would come there it was such a thick forest people were wondering why prabhupad bought a land there why are you buying a land in jungle he said wait and watch and from that location vrindavan current vrindavan was ending at ram jivai satsang bhavan vidyapeet chora i don't know how many of you know that place from where there is a madan mohan temple in 2 minutes and makavya temple in 2 minutes that is called vidyapeet chora there vrindavan ended actually but the land was there in the forest and from that area for 28 long kilometers the sun rays would not touch the ground any time such thick forest was there so they were actually moving in the forest so this basuti village is 28 kilometers away from vrindavan and interestingly scriptures are explaining that the tents of nand maharaj and vrishabhanu uh, maharaj were touching each other how is that how is that possible today's geography tells you that they are the two locations are 28 kilometers away and scriptures are telling that both these tents of both these friends were touching each other trust possible how because they were so large and so expansive that they were almost 28 kilometers of diameter that's why they were touching each other this is how we can understand so krishna balram jumped on the bhumi of vrindavan looking here and there in a curious curiosity and started enjoying with friends instantly there was no need to decide and plan they just started enjoying instantly so jeeva goswami says here that it is impossible to describe the beauty of vrindavan such beauty of vrindavan is always witnessed by the great devotees who love preman jana churita bhakti vilochane na santaha sadaiva hrudayeshu vilokayanti those who have love for krishna they are not only witnessing krishna in their heart but they are also witnessing vrindavan dham in their heart because vrindavan dham is not different from krishna krishna is not different from vrindavan so both these entities which are not different from each other are always revealed in the hearts of those who love krishna so this is a lesson for us that if we love krishna even vrindavan dham will be manifesting in the hearts of all of us <clears throat> so this is how they traveled and then now one more interesting description is given by jeeva goswami jeeva goswami says that the tent listen very carefully the tent itself was 8 kroshas by 4 kroshas in size One krosha is two miles, so eight krosha is sixteen miles, and four krosha is eight miles. That is Nanda Maharaj's tent size. Sixteen miles by eight miles was the expanse of only the tent of Nanda Maharaj. Please understand. And central was the house of Nanda Maharaj, surrounded by his brothers. So this is how Jiva Goswami and Shukdev Goswami they describe how the brijvasi party the brijvasis of ravel and gokul how they traveled from mahavan to vrindavan but i want to now explain to you one important thing that did the uh, calamities end when they went to vrindavan no the calamities continued the disturbances continued the atrocities of kamsa continued so what is guaranteed in vrindavan is bliss but not peace don't go to vrindavan to achieve peace vrindavan will never give peace to you even when krishna was right there in the middle of all the gopis and gopas they were daily in so much tension some day the bull is coming some day the woman is coming 12 12 miles long some day the bullock cart is coming some day the bavandar is coming whirlwind is coming some day trees are falling some day the bull is coming some day the horse is coming some day the duck is coming some day rains are coming some day whirlwind is coming you can imagine not a single day was free of any anxiety but still being krishna around they were all enjoying all the time mixed with the middle of miseries so what do we what do we uh, understand by this 
you should understand that by becoming devotees of krishna don't think your life will be peaceful but blissfulness is guaranteed if you become krishna conscious when you are with krishna bliss is guaranteed may not be peace is not guaranteed but we don't mind we want krishna whether bliss or misery we want to be next to krishna so we adopt krishna as our companion then your life will be always blissful in the middle of all the miserable conditions of life and the miserable conditions of life will be always there around you but you will not be affected by any of the miserable situations they will not cause you some negative emotions they will be right there next to you but you will be you will remain blissful in the middle of all those dreadful miseries of life so there was a very simple thing to do if they really want to be peaceful they should have given up the company of krishna because all the miseries were uh, attracted by krishna they were all coming to him because krishna was there all the miseries were coming coming kamsa was sending everybody to kill krishna so wherever krishna was there there was danger for everybody who is surrounded surrounding him but did brijbasis ever leave krishna because he was source of all the calamities no actually he was source of all the calamities but brijbasis never left him because their fear of being around him causing miseries was much much inferior to the bliss that he they were getting by being with krishna so they didn't they didn't care for the miseries or troubles or atrocities or disturbances caused by uh, krishna's presence with them but they were immersed in the bliss that was created by krishna around him so our spiritual life also is like that only when you adopt krishna consciousness do not expect any peace his holiness sachinandan maharaj told me vishwarup do you love vrindavan i said yes maharaj i love vrindavan then be prepared your life will not be at peace your life will be always in misery <laughs> you will be tested and tested and tested if you dare to love vrindavan and krishna you will be tested by krishna for that love so be prepared and while you are giving that examination of the tests of, of krishna there will be also bliss while giving the test while passing the test and after the test also so it's a very challenging eventful life krishna conscious life is never dull life it's no monotonous happy bliss happy, happy and peaceful life it's a very eventful thrill full of thrill you know bolte na sansani khez complete action emotion and all kinds of unexpected events which ultimately lead you to blissful situation are filled up in your life when you accept krishna as your master so thus ends the description of krishna balaram and his parents and all the brijwasis moving from mahavan to vrindavan dham hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare hare hari ram hari ram 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 hari hari thank you very much Are there any questions please ask thank you so much prabhu ji this was uh, completely blissful and peaceful for us <laughs> right now <laughs> but even if the peace prabhu ji you said not your krishna <laughs> yes yes but how do we prabhu ji how do we uh, not expect is not there expect some like, not expect what uh, not expect peace or uh, material you are happiness. you are free to expect whatever you want krishna is free to give whatever he wants to give you <laughs> <laughs> so you go on desiring whatever you want krishna will keep giving you whatever he wants to give you <laughs> so is there some way to uh deal with situations and move forward like you began the session only with saying that always march forward you know whatever comes in your life sadaiva uh, sainika pude cha jayache na maguti tu va kadi firayache the childhood poetry it says oh soldier in this case soldier is you keep going ahead don't look behind always keep going ahead whatever happens in life keep going ahead keep 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 positive attitude and keep going ahead and the secret behind all this i told you in the beginning of my lecture today while you are doing your common household chores every day 
like your washing clothes cooking making a home cleaning washing up keep hearing krishna leela your ears are open they are not cooking they are not washing they are not making the beds they are open put the tape on i'll show you see this here keep this on while you are brushing your teeth even right from that time keep this on and let it be on fill up your existence with those pastimes of krishna then even though you are surrounded by miseries they will not affect you because you have taken the vaccine of krishna leela through your ears and what i told you your heart will not have entrance of love so your heart will become love so please do that please do that <laughs> But you also, uh, uh, maybe I missed it. But you said that this is the definition of brajwasis. Yeah, you, those who are brajan. Brajan means those who keep moving from one place to another with their cows. They are called brajwasis. They traverse braj bhumi from one forest to another, herding their cows. Sometimes shifting their locations also. But they basically keep moving from one place to another to give good fresh grass to their cows. there's a custom and you will be very happy to know nowadays you know the bridge basis are also staying in uk and us and settled down there educated themselves there and earning money there but they come down to brindavan at age of 50 55 and they herd the cows because till they herd the cows personally they are not given the title of bridge basi whoever they are that is the whole point that is the traditional culture see nand maharaj was such a big rich man right and krishna balram were his sons sons of the king they had empty number of thousands of servants to herd the cows but nand maharaj made krishna balram herd the cows personally he trained them right from baby cows and baby bulls to big cows and big bulls later on after gopashtami why is that because he didn't want to lose krishna balram to be known as brajbasis so he gave them the culture right from beginning of their life so similarly we have to give our children the culture of krishna consciousness right from their beginning thank you prabhu ji anybody else has any question they can unmute themselves and achyut krishna prabhu hari krishna prabhu yes uh, yes i am uh, mathura mata ji nandan pranam prabhu ji nandan pranam Who is asking question? Outstanding. Thank you, sir. Hare Krishna, Prabhu ji. Uh, can you tell me the book of uh, Jiva so uh, Jiva Gosam? Which book he has uh, explained all this? Gopal Champu. Gopal Champu. Okay, okay. Thank you. Very Thank beautiful you. book. Very beautiful. Any other question by anybody? Okay. No question. Then we'll end here. I will meet you next Monday. That is twenty um, one. Nirjal Ekadashi, Prabhu ji. Nirjal Ekadashi, Jai Jai Ho. Nirjal <laughs> Ekadashi ki Jai Ho. We we'll drown you in the nectar. Yes. The nectar will go inside. That's the why I reminded you so that. Uh, Over the years. Yes. Maybe we can meet at six fifteen if you don't mind. Yes, Prabhu ji. We yes. start at six fifteen and go till seven forty five. So we can go for a little longer also. If, uh, yes. 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 so that you will forget your misery of nirjala ekadashi <laughs> hari krishna krishna katha prata will drown you and will forget that you are fasting ekadashi nirjala there is a power of krishna leela right from today itself you start putting the lectures on of krishna's past times right from the early morning and in all the day when you are cooking doing your household chores and doing things keep hearing krishna leela they will transport you to the spiritual world right on the spot okay jai jai sri radhe shyam